also we have Lakia from Project Embrace. We've got her coach, Enetan. Greetings. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, thank you, sis. We have Sherry Ander Santos from Pure Goodness. You've just seen him. We've got Natasha Briscoe. Why are you not all drinking? Come on. Anyone have any questions for any of the lovely ladies? I'll bring the microphone to you. Do you do courses? How can we get in touch? I put the dates out and I advertise it and then people sign up. So the first thing you should do is to visit our website, puregoodnesslondon.com, and put your name on our mailing list and you will be one of the first to know when the date is out there. And yeah, we do them in quite small groups, 10 to 12 people maximum. So you have lots of, um, you know, it's all hands on. You make something, you take it home with you. You get to ask, uh, um, ask lots of questions and yeah, we go quite deep. And they last for about two and a half hours. In Brixton, in London. Oh, I forgot we're not in London. <laughs> yeah. Okay, many thanks. So the next question. Hi, good afternoon, sherry -Ann. Wanted to ask a question. I know that you was making up the uh, mixes for the hair. You, I know you put essential oils in it. My question is, do you have to put, I know there's properties within certain types, mm -hmm. but does essential oils is a must? Is it no, a must? No, it's not a must. It's almost like an added bonus, really. So, for example, the moisturizer that I made, um, it's going to moisturize your hair with or without it. But because of the, like you said, the thera sometimes it's therapeutic benefits that you get. So with lavender, like it actually is very calming on your whole being and your whole person. I, I literally walk around with a lavender in my, in my bag and I kind of put it on my pulse points because I just love the smell and you do get that calm. Um, so you want those benefits. The rosemary, the peppermint, they're going to be stimulating on your hair follicles. So it's just adding something more into a product, really, so but, you, but, your hair, but the product would still do its job without it. So really, for whatever you put in, you need to know the properties of whatever essential oils is for the benefits for yeah. you. Yeah, it's really important because some essential oils, um, they are, they, you don't want them anywhere near your hair or, or scalp at all. So you can't just say, oh, it's essential oil, it's natural, I'm going to put it in there. Understand um, what its benefits are, if it is suitable for your hair, um, and what quantity. So it might be one drop maximum because it's that potent. But in that, my question is, um, although the essential oils is, has the benefits, don't get me wrong, I'm just thinking to myself, with the benefits, oh crumbs, I've lost my trail of thought now. I'm really sorry. It's okay. Jesus. Any other questions? Whilst this finds her train of thought? Yep. Okay. Hi, is it um, Natasha, the lady on the end? Hello. Yeah, Hello. you know that you said um, am amula oil for grey hair. Amla oil. Am yeah. How do you use it? Is it does it go on the hair? Do you ingest it? What? Okay, so um, I I sell an amla oil on my website, and amla oil is an oil which you would apply topically to your hair. You. Um, it's this particular amla oil, it's made with a sesame seed base and you will apply it in the mornings, leave it on the hair and you can use it as a hot oil or you can use it as a, just a leave-in oil. I had a customer who is a man, he was in his 60s and he had a grey beard. He applied it to his beard for four months and his beard darkened. So amla oil is very good for darkening greys. And if you want to get more information about it, you can have a look on YouTube. It's also very good for, um, for t types of alopecia. So alopecia areata, there was a lady who did a, a diary, a video diary of her experience applying amla oil to her hair, amla to her hair, and it helped to grow her hair back. Okay, but there are different types of alopecia, so it all depends on what is at the root of it. Um, but amla is very good for the hair, and you will apply it topically. A M L A, amla. Um, it's for Eniton, I think. Eniton. 
Um, you were talking about like the hair textures, uh, like 4A, B, C, Z, whatever. But what is your um, take on porosity, low porosity, high porosity? Because that's the buzz at the moment. So, and of course, like they're saying about low porosity, doesn't take in as much moisture and high porosity takes in too much moisture. So what is your thinking on that, please? And Ayurvedic um, oils and so forth as well. Um, yes, so with regards to peroxity, um, one of the key things that goes around is dropping a strand in water as a test. Um, I have to say that is not an accurate means of measure because there will be variables that can um, um, have a reflect a different result. For example, the density of the hair, the temperature of the water, was the hair clean, was the hair dry? Um, each of those variables will give you a different result if you drop a strand of, the, of, the, of hair in water. But going over the buzz is that if you pull a strand in water, it will the sink, go to the middle, or right to the top. But that's not an accurate means of measure. The best way to check your peroxity is the characteristics and how your hair behaves. For example, on clean, dry hair, if you put a strand in between your thumb and your, what's this finger called, your pointy finger, and you raise it upwards, if it feels extremely rough or extremely smooth, roughness will determine that the cuticles are raised so you have higher proxity. If it feels not as smooth or smoother, then it suggests you have low proxity. Um, one person can have different types of proxity on their hair. Um, you can have somebody where the back is low, the middle is high. So it's too generic to say that one person is all low, even the majority may be low, you can still have some areas that reflect high peroxity. Um, what that means to conclude is, if your low peroxity or majority of your hair reflects low peroxity characteristics, it means that it's difficult for moisture or chemicals or color um, to penetrate. You have to do things to encourage it. For example, when you're moisturizing, which we talked about earlier on, you're squeezing the product in. Um, it also means you have build up very, very easily. If you're high in peroxity, it means that um, moisture will go in easier, but because there are cracks and holes, but it also means you, it would escape through the same um, holes or cracks that it's gone in. What was the other part? Um, there are various, various, there's so much powders and, and oils that um, are under that category that have amazing properties, amazing studies that support them. The deep follicle treatment I sell on my table it has a huge um, amount of iridogative oils in them and Chinese medicinal health. Well, yes, so I do encourage those. They are amazing healing properties that come with those. Thank you. So we have a question here. Uh, so Natasha, um, do you have a dietary book on what you've done today? Because it was really good. Hello, thank you. When I hold the workshop on how diet affects the hair, I usually give out handouts. Um, but I haven't got one with me now. If you are interested, then you can send me a message on um, Facebook or Instagram or email, uh, WhatsApp, or contact me on my um, website and I will send some information to you. Okay. The website's ariseandshinecosmetics.co.uk. Okay. This question is for pure goodness and the lady that just spoke, is it Natasha? <laughs> Natasha. Um, in the current climate, there's a big shift away from plastic packaging. What are your considerations about packaging? Um, so my considerations, and they are, and they've always been, is that um, use things that are sustainable. So we use some plastics. We we also use some unwrapped, so our shampoo bars and our soaps, we just sell them as is, and we put them in little paper bags. And we always encourage people to recycle them. I know there are people that would love just to come and do refills, <laughs> you know. Um, and at the moment, uh, we just have a manufacturing base, not a retail shop. We sell through other um, suppliers. So it's hard to kind of have a base where you can refill containers. But in an ideal world, that's what we would do. But I always say recycle them or repurpose them. You know, we sell um, a, a body lotion, which is 700 grams. It's a massive jar. When you wash it out, you can use that for so many things. You know, don't just be throwing it away and ordering your next one, even the smaller jars. Um, 
you repurpose your packaging where you can and where you can't then definitely recycle it but I think yeah, the whole world is moving towards more sustainable and it will get phased out more and more but until they start to make more sustainable packaging then yeah I will be keep using recyclable plastics um, all the products that I that I formulate are in dark glass jars and bottles um, I I'm not too keen on plastic, um, but again, just like um, my sister here, we also encourage people to reuse the packaging um, because there are some of the jars can be used for so many different things after. So. We also have the sister that's just joined the panel, Antoinette Nimblet. So if anyone has any questions more focused around locks, then she's available. Does anyone have any more questions? We've got time for about two or three more questions. Um, greetings. I want to embark on a lock journey. I plan on starting them in two weeks' time. Do you have any tips on how to um, maintain your locks without build-up? Okay. Hello. Thank you. Um, yes, there were quite a few um, pointers that I'd suggest before you embark on your journey. The first one is to be very aware of what products you're putting into your locks because it's different from open afro. What you put in will stay in unless it's able to wash out. So things like beeswax is a definite no-no. Um, sheer butter is a no-no. Um, any petroleum-based products, which we probably have all moved away from using now, are definitely a no-no as well. Um, Water-based products, gel-based products, providing they haven't got the harmful ingredients in them, um, namely formaldehyde. Um, that is a big one that's usually in these gels. Um, and oil-based as well. Not mineral oil, though. Natural oils. Yeah. Um, one other thing that I would advise you to do is any fabric that you come into contact with, or you're looking to purchase, make sure that you do a fabric test. It's a simple thing of just running your fingers or thumb along the nape of the fabric. If anything comes off, don't use it. Because if that's coming off, it's going to end up getting embedded in your locks. So even if your favourite auntie's given you a lovely hat and scarf set, re-gift it. <laughs> <laughs> just don't tell her. Is this is a question for Natasha. Is there a time when the body can take too much protein? Because um, I'm noticing that a lot of people are concerned about, oh, I've got to get my protein. Oh, I've got to get my protein here. Whether they're, um, they eat meat, whether they're a vegetarian, whether they're a vegan. So can the body have too much protein? I'm, I'm glad you asked that because um, that was something that I had forgotten to add to what I would presented earlier. Um, in terms of protein, the best type of protein to take is the plant-based protein. So that will be your beans, your legumes, um, your nuts. They're easily absorbed uh, much more than the meat proteins are. And yes, um, if you have too much protein in your diet, it isn't good for you because it causes the body to, um, it absorbs the calcium, it absorbs calcium that your body needs. So for instance, when someone has osteoporosis, they will say, oh, go and drink milk. That's not such a good idea um, because the protein um, in the milk will absorb the calcium that's in the body. So don't have too much protein and try and find plant-based proteins. And yeah, I also did some research into that exact thing. So backing up what Natasha said, they've actually done research that shows that when people are bodybuilding and they're having protein, after about 30 grams of protein, all protein after that isn't being absorbed. It just gets turned into acid crystals and it floats around and ends up in your joints. Problem. So um, thank you for that. Well, we've got two more questions and then we're going to go for a break. Okay, um, and when it comes to products, would you say the fewer amount of ingredients in the products are better, or would you say it doesn't matter? Is this controversial? That's quite a, um, a broad question, and the answer would be it depends, you know. So it does depend on what you want the product to do. So in regards to moisturizing, a hair moisturizer, 
I personally would say, you know, fewer is, is, is going to be as good as like, you know, 20. So for example, you saw the moisturizing, um, or the sealant rather that I made, the hair cream. That had, what, th three main uh, things, the shea butter, the coconut oil, the aloe vera. You know, in terms of adding, sealing in the moisture from the water into your hair, that's going to do a pretty good job. So if we took the same quantity, 200 grams, but then put, rather than, you know, 100 of the moisturizer, put 10 grams of a bit of jojoba, a bit of avocado, a bit of, I would just say why, really. I think often, again, because of the lack of um, understanding about what the hair really, really needs, we kind of get drawn to products with um, lots of things in it. So if they say it has avocado and shea butter, and you're going to think it's better than the one that just has the two, but it's not necessarily, because they're kind of doing the same job. They have very similar properties, so you don't necessarily need it. And I do think it's just about, yeah, raising your level of understanding about reading the label, because when you do see probably 20 oils, it's a tiny amount of each, and arguably that's going to do the same thing as a larger amount of one or two. That being said, in some um, you know very specific products like some reconstructors, things that have much more have more scientific ingredients in, and therefore some chemical ingredients. Yeah, it's ne it's necessary to have you know the whole combination of whatever they are. But if it's a simple sealant product, then no. But anyone else may may differ. I've got a slightly different view on your point, but you do make a um, valid point by having minuscule amounts of several different things. It doesn't make a difference. But when you've got a combination that actually does specific things like feeding the scalp, feeding the follicle, feeding the actual hair shaft and making sure that the porosity level is met, then you're looking at different combinations that will help with the hair, which is exactly what you just said. So it's not necessarily less is more, but it's the combination of it. So, yeah. Okay, ladies on the panel, I'm going to ask you to think about one quick last message you want to give to the audience. Um, but before then, we've got another quick, the last um, question from the audience. Hi, I'm not sure who could answer this, but um, what process should you do or take when you go to the gym and you go to the gym four or five times a week and um, you come back do you, are you supposed to wash out the sweat out of your hair are you supposed to wash your hair every day what is the process in in after doing a workout um, one of the things that it depends on again how heavy you sweat um, that's also a contributing factor because the sweat, the salt levels can dry and make you feel inflamed and itchy. Um, I wouldn't encourage you to wash every single day because um, then it will also cause issues in future. What you can do is you can try co-washing, but again with an actual co-wash product, which we spoke about earlier, that has an active ingredient to cleanse, but also give the strands a quick boost of moisture rather than using a conditioner, which has nothing active in it to cleanse. Um, and then at the end of the week, then you can do an actual wash um, in your case, that you gym a lot, you sweat, well, if you sweat a lot, instead of going a whole year and you're doing a sulfate-free shampoo, you will need to incorporate sulfate um, because you will have a higher requirement of it. Now, there's no need to be afraid of sulfate if there's a requirement of it for your hair. It's just, it's, it's a way of lifting ingredients or minerals that a sulfate-free shampoo can't lift, if that makes sense. So most people don't like it because they feel after that they've used a, sol uh, a shampoo with sulfur and they've gone to the conditioning, the hair doesn't feel nice, it doesn't feel soft. True. So what you do is the first wash will be the shampoo with sulfur. The second wash will be the moisturizing shampoo. Now you have a balance. Anyone? Okay, ladies, so we're going to ask each of the panel members if you can... We're running out of time, my love. I'm so sorry. Okay, so if anyone wants more information, all of these ladies are still going to be here, so you can come and have some one-to-one -one time with them. If you've got more specific questions, please feel free to ask them. But I'm going to ask all the panel experts if you can just leave the audience with just one quick um, piece of advice before we go for break, please. With locks, um, better out than in. If you can avoid getting things into your locks and preventing buildup, it's better than trying to get it out. But I'm happy to answer any further questions on my stand, which is at the back of the hall. Thanks. Um, what I would say is that whether you've got locks or you've got you know, a free afro, your hair is unique to you. So love it, embrace it, and know that whatever you do to your hair is 
it's more important when it, to think about health than to think about length or how beautiful it looks. Well, it will look beautiful anyway if it's healthy. Um, my presentation was with regards to retaining thickness and length. And most people feel that it's only for that person because it's genetics. Um, this is the first, I showed a picture of my hair rich in waistline. That's the first time I, well not the first time, but since I started the journey, that's the first time I've ever seen hair like that on myself. So it's not genetic, I still have the same genetics today as I had 10 years ago. But yeah, my hair is waist length. So my advice is your hair is only as good as your last performance to it. <laughs> yeah. I would say um, don't be afraid to experiment in mixing your own stuff basically. You know, your ancestors did it before you, you can do it again. And those that come after you, you owe it to them. So um, buy the ingredients, try the combinations, try what works. It's very experimentational, you know, it's trial and error. I've failed many, many times before, but just give yourself the confidence and try it out. It's not for everyone, so where it's not, then go and find some natural products that work for you and buy them. But where you're tempted and you think, actually, I want to start doing it, just do it. And I will say, um, use what you have in your house. Don't buy things and put them down. Use what you have in your house. We come out, we come to so many different events, pick up things, pick up that, pick up this, and it sits on the shelf. Use what you have in your house. Okay, in fact, Leon wanted to, thank you. Sorry, can we give him a round of applause? Thank you. Okay, Leon actually asked me to make sure that you all got enough time to ask all your questions. So, we are going to all go for a break. So, anyone is welcome to go for a break. Along the, again, there's stalls along here and in the main area, and there's food. However, if you want to stay here and ask the experts questions, then you're welcome to do that throughout the break. And then we're going to be coming back at half past for the last presentation. So if anyone wants to, yeah, half past for the last presentation. So if anyone wants to stay here, experts, where are you going? <laughs> no, you don't get a break. <laughs> half past five. 5.45, I knew that. I was, test I was testing you lot, okay? All right, so the next presentation starts at 5.45, exactly here. We don't need the microphone. If anyone wants to come and ask the experts questions here, please come and do so. Or on, your, on their stand, if they have to go. Part the health process. The hidden sites of black hair kings and queens. We have an entrepreneur, a business owner, and one of our presenters for the day's proceedings right here. Introduce yourself to the audience, my sister. Antoinette Nimblet. So Antoinette what, sir? Nimblet. Nimblet. Okay. And you are a? Therapeutic loctician. And your business is? Natural Arts Hair Care. Natural Arts Hair Care Kings and Queens. Now, you're delivering a presentation today, specifically on caring for locks, yeah? So, my first question is, what are the, 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 some of the, the, the specifics here? Like, not, not, not big details, but just like some specifics that apply to locks that not necessarily apply to the rest of our natural hairstyles. Specifically, don't use sheer butter in locks. I learnt that one the hard way, kings and queens. My locks used to be a lot longer than this. But yeah, go ahead. Um, don't have naps on your mm -hmm. clothing. Make sure that anything that you wear doesn't shed. Yes, 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 yes. Um, point number three. Can't think of one right now. Sorry. <laughs> When, when, they, when you're gonna, you have to wait till you get the full presentation, kings and queens, because it was full of gems and knowledge uh, and information, yeah? So how did you get into this specific business that you got into right now? Actually, I started off in 2004 with Adornment. Um, you mentioned that earlier today. Yes, 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 I did, didn't I? <laughs> um, and I went through the training program for being a loctician. They had a loctician braces oh, course. Okay, okay. They only ran two, so I'm one of the few that actually did it. Um, and here I am today with my own brand, my own products and my own book. Mm -hmm. So what kind of products do you sell? Um, I sell moisturiser, uh, hair oil and a hair spritz to literally maintain locks. It works with natural hair as well and it literally washes out the hair. That's another point actually. That's the third point. Okay, right. Anything you put in your locks should wash out. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Retwisting or interlocking? 
Depends on the hair and the technique okay. and the loctician. Okay, yeah. interesting. That's, that's the only time I'm going to answer, you know. Usually I get one or the other, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it depends. It, it totally depends on who's doing it, right. what kind of hair it is, okay. and what techniques are used. Okay, so events like this here, how, what is the importance of events like this specifically for our community? Well, for me, from a loctician's point of view, it's about giving the perspective of locks because we're all in the transition mode. Everyone's wanting to go through from lock, um, doing their hair in chemically or wearing wigs and weaves, which is all a personal preference. But when we're moving into the natural realm, I find that it's very top heavy into natural hair and not a lot out there for locks. So I'm here to share my information, to give advice, to promote good hair practice um, and all hair is good hair by the way it's just how you look after it um, and yeah that's that's where I'm at right now so finally yeah, before I get you to just let people know where they can find you yeah as you can see I'm, I'm regrowing my natalie I had I had my locks were like 10 years nine in between nine and ten years I had a son um, and so as a part of that new thank you very much so as part of that new journey in life so I had to decide to restart the locks again as a part of that, you know, that rebirth journey. Yeah. But I'm just freeforming at the moment. Just letting it do what it's doing, yeah. So do you do you cater for freeform? Um, yeah. I cater for all hair textures as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how what, what would you say specifically for for freeform locks, yeah, in terms of caring for them and helping them to develop and grow? Cause I know a lot of people that do freeform, they just leave it and just let it do what it's doing. And sometimes I say even among locks people nowadays, the freeform is like the the the, the, the marginal <laughs> kind of group of people. So yeah, what, what kind of what would you give for free formers? Uh, keep it cleaned, keep it moisturised and keep it happy. Yep. If, it. You, if you don't keep it moisturised, it's going to get dry and brittle. Yep. If you don't keep um, the hair from getting too dry, it's going to start trying to yes, yes. get in touch with each other and yes. start yes, yes, yes. dropping out. And it's all about the moisture at the end of the day, which is why the aloe vera with the back home Rastafarians right. take the ratchet, yep, yep, yep. wash their hair, yep, yep, yep. caters for it on so many different levels. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you very much, my sister. We've enjoyed having you on Got Chris TV. And we're sure it's not going to be the last time Kings and Queens. So let's let us know where we can find you and get in touch with you. Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who came out today and supported my book and my um, talking to everyone here today. It's been so lovely to be received. You can find me on Instagram at Natural Lights Hair Care. Um, my website is naturallightshaircare.com and that's natural I-T-E-S. Um, what else is there? Info at Natural Lights Hair Care as well. Thank you very much. Natural Lights Hair Everything Natural Lights Hair Care, Kings and Queens, do get it done, get it locked, you know what I'm saying? Keep it out of them fresh and well catered for with Natural Lights Hair Care. The hidden science of black hair. And if anybody has the hidden science, Kings and Queens, it's the sister that I'm sitting next to right about now. She goes by the name of Any Ton of the healthy hair studio greetings my sister hello hello greetings i'm just, just name check here did i pronounce it correctly so I'm, 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 i've improved kings of queens i've improved you know what i'm saying it's a yoruba name right it's a yoruba name, yeah. so my yoruba is improving I, I we do give thanks we do give thanks you know what i'm saying so yes sister welcome again got Chris TV it's a pleasure to always have you do you know what I'm saying um, and yeah um, first of all you know this this for people that just don't know yeah who are watching this for the first time what is it exactly that you do okay so I am studying trichology and I'm also a healthy hair ch coach so what that means is that I teach and I encourage ladies I give them the skill set to improve the health of their hair whether there's thickness whether there's edges or length that's what I do and then I train salon owners and I make and sell my own products. Now, you, your, your story is that you never thought that you could have long hair as a black woman. And now your hair is currently how long? I have waist length hair. Waist length. So uh, under all this Kings of Queens, this beautiful hairstyle that she has is actually waist length hair Kings of Queens. Yes. So um, when I started my hair journey, I didn't think it was possible for a black woman. More specifically, I didn't think it was possible for a Yoruba person to have long hair because I'd never seen that in person. All the images I saw was either someone of mixed races or people on YouTube. It was too far. There was no close proximity until one day I saw somebody, a Nigerian, and I thought, okay, we're both Nigerians. And she had very long, healthy hair. And I got curious, like, how is this possible? And I started reading the signs behind it. Okay. So what if I said that to you though, Sissy? But people were gonna say, well, boy, like, first of all, how long did it take you to get waist length here? 
Um, I reached Wasteland at year three when I started. So who's going to wait three years yeah, to get Wasteland here when you can go to the shop and buy a 22 inch? Just like that. Why would you wait to, for three years to grow your hair? Because you take all the 22 inches and you're back with your two inches. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the 22 inches can actually be your real hair. Okay, all right. I hear that. I mean, don't get much. You know, I mean, you can't ask a question better than that, Kings and Queens. You know what I'm saying? So, you sell, you, you, as well as giving coaching, you give coaching. Yes. yes, and you also sell products. So, what kind of products do you sell? So, I do. My best sellers are the protein defense, and what that does is that it creates breakage resilient hair so when you're combing when you're washing when you're disangling you don't have to see an excessive amount of hair down the drain and then my other best seller is a product called deep follicle treatment which is Chinese medicinal herbs um, and what it does is that it repairs the connecting tissue surrounding the follicle which will help encourage growth for edges or just to speed up the average growth rate of a person okay and we, we heard it through the grapevine that you have a new a new product coming Hot off the press. What's the new product? So, my new product is actually a wooden comb. It's a tool. It's not a hair product. It's now a tool. Um, it's a tool that I have crafted to be catered to dry hair. Um, most of the wooden combs you see on the market are either too small, the teeth are too narrow, or they're not fat. So, I thought of the, um, um, the example of finger detangling. So I tailored and designed the comb to kind of almost look at your fingers and it's seamless. So you don't have the seam, so you don't have strands getting caught in between. That's powerful, kid. You know, simple. Yeah. Ne nature is the best teacher, you know. Make a comb that looks like your hair. And that's how our ancestors did it. If you look at a lot of the ancient combs, yeah, from especially West Africa, that's exactly what they did. Am I, am I, am I correct? That is correct. So yes, yes. Well, we look for, so when is that going to come to the market? That's, I'm going to release that maybe on Friday. Okay. So in about five days. All right. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Well, Kings and Queens, Anytong was here. Healthy Hair Studio was here today and they sold out. Yeah, everything gone. It, everything gone. Sell off. Yeah, you know I'm saying. So, you know, you know that you know the products work. You know what I'm saying? You got repeat customers here, right? Yes. Not only that, people respond to results. Right, right. That's why it's selling out. People respond to results. So they'll come back, they'll tell their friends. They see images of what well, if she can do. Because that's how I started mine. I saw somebody that achieved it. People respond to results. It's as simple as that. Right. So I'm going to ask you two more questions. The first one is about one of the things that you said in your presentation today, which is about the concept of dry hair. Yeah. Now this is a this is a concept that we fight. Yeah. As black people, we fight the concept of dry hair. But you said that our hair is actually designed to be dry. Uh, the black hair is deliberately created and designed to be dry because of the shape of the individual strand. Okay. That shape is not designed to hold moisture. Right. And people get frustrated because you're trying to fight something that, quite frankly, you can't win. Right. So the goal is, instead of waiting for the hair to dry out or thinking, I don't want my hair to dry out, you're saying before my hair gets dry. Right, right, right. So you basically have to, you have to maintain moisture in your, in your hair for your scalp. It will never dry out. It's not a realistic expectation for something that is designed to be dry. Okay. So in, in sense of maintaining moisture, because obviously we've had a lot of stuff in terms of um, oiling and greasing and that kind of thing, and you, 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 you provided a designation, a distinction between moisture and hydration. What's the difference? So most people confuse because they hear that you put water on your hair as moisture. That confusion comes from water-based product. The reason they call water-based product because yes, water is the first ingredient, but it has other supporting ingredients in there. So it's not just water pH seven. It turns a hydrator water into a moisturizer. If you just spray water in your hair alone, just water, it will evaporate quickly. There's no substance, it's just water. But in the moment while the water is on your hair, it does feel more, um, hydrated, it does feel soft, but it's not gonna last. So you, in, you need substance. Hydration versus moisture. Okay. Well, it, it, the, the hidden sides of black hair kings and queens. I'm sure people are wondering where they can find you for the advice that you give, as well as the product, including, but not limited to, your soon to be released comb. Yes. So all products can be purchased on healthyhairstudio.co.uk. That's the co.uk, Healthy Hair Studio. Or you can just Google Anytal Hair Coach and you find the social media page and all the other forums, Anytal Hair Coach. Kings and Queens, Sister Anytal, once again on Got Kush TV. It is another time, but I'm sure it won't be the last time. You're always welcome, my sister. We give facts. You ain't got nothing if you ain't got Kush.